Hello, this is a Knight K10 upright piano made in 1978 and just come into stock. Now we have pitch raised and tuned it already and uh, just going to look at what other work might need doing on it. I want to use the opportunity to contrast it, compare it with other Knights that we have in stock as well and uh, other small pianos. This is not a small Knight actually, this is a much taller one and made much later. This is actually belongs to a client and they've asked us to store it free. It's an arrangement we have with many clients and there's only a rental piano. That lasts for five years, that uh, system. And then afterwards they have to make a decision. Either we can store it for them or, they, or we purchase it from them or they can have the piano back, of course. This is another client rental piano. Um, it has a very long music stand, as you can see. It goes at the whole length of the piano. I'll just fold it down so you can see it. There we are, very useful, that. Uh, this is uh, also a rental piano, same same system, but this is what we call a genuine, I call a genuine night, and what we mean by that, or rather the kind of night we're trying to source, you can identify those because at the back you'll see that the, car, the, the back caster here juts out, and therefore it needs this extra piece of wood, so it stands slightly away from the wall, it's important to know that if you buy one of the uh, these nights, that so wonderful, so wonderful the pianos are, and the, um, Alfred Knight stopped at nothing to, to make the best possible piano. So everything's just a, so, extremely well made. Now that one dated 1970 and this is 1959, exactly the same model. And again, one of the best nights. Uh, this is a wonderful tone. This is actually a client's night that we're working on for them. We've moved it uh, and uh, via our workshop and it needs treatment for moth, which we've already done. And the video of this was made yesterday. On that video, I have a brochure Put a brochure of um, other night pianos, all the night pianos available in 1966. You might, I'll try to put a link to that at the bottom so you can have a look at that brochure. So um, this is a, a equally good piano and it does need a reasonable amount of work on it. Now this is the taller night, which um, dated 1990 and doesn't have the telltale um, casters jutting out at the back. See that caster's right on the back, but not jutting out. Um, so this is a younger night and quite a different piano. Now here's one of the major construction differences. This is the younger night, the 1990, and this is normal. Where there's a gap here on the tuning pins, you see, where the brace is here. And now the younger, the older night, the original nights, don't have that. So now if we take a look at this other night, the tuning pins are con continuous here. You see, and there's no brace here. Now, why is that important? Let's look at the Knight catalogue. So on the Knight brochure here, it said, Knight designers have dispensed with the bar brace in the treble section, and in so doing have eliminated the bad notes which normally occur on either side of the treble brake bar. Let's see if we can hear that at all. By the way, this brochure is featured in the other video, which I'll link to for you. So let's hear those notes around the brake bar. Uh, it's quite a hard, harsh sound. Now here's the original night. Same notes. And much more evenness of tone. This does need a little bit of voicing, this piano. Um, it's been played a bit. As you can see by the hammers, they've, they've, there's some indentation on them. Not, not a lot, but it's caused them to vary a bit. And now it's uh, an ideal time to, to voice accurately. They've been played in nicely. and. Now with voicing it'd be wonderful. So let's have another listen. You hear the harsh sound there. Now that's on all modern uprights. Obviously a well-made modern upright doesn't have too harsh a sound. And back to the one with the which is dispensed with the with the brace bar. Much more consistent. Now this is a well mark, our other preferred, main preferred make of, of small modern piano. And, and they've managed to, to get a wonderful even tone there. So there are makes of piano that, that have managed to achieve that without getting rid of the, the, the bass bar. So lastly, back to this one without the brace again. So it's not, the well mark's managed to get, to achieve that without having to get rid of the bar brace. Now there are many, many other aspects to the night that make it an exceptional instrument. 
Um, and this plaque's often on, I'm sorry, part of this plaque's missing, but I haven't got one with the whole plaque, but um, this is one of the things they put on. This instrument's been specially constructed to withstand severe extremes, I think, of heat, dryness, humidity, and central heating in any parts of the world. And it's totally true, and I can remember in my very early tuning days, a night that I used to tune regularly every six months. The key was left in, underneath the flower pot outside the house. I went in the house and there was literally probably a couple of very light, small unisons out each, every six months. But she insisted on having the piano tuned every six months. So I used to try and do bits of regulation, um, bits of voicing, but uh, there wasn't really anything to do. But a check was left for me on the piano as well, about 1980, just 80-odd. So that was a, obviously a pleasant experience. The cat seemed to enjoy me coming. Finally, let's look at some of the, uh, the break point here and see what, how they managed with, to get the tone evened out. That's very good. Not perfect, but um, for a small piano, it's tremendously good. I've talked about that on many other videos too. And a nice rich bass. And the Wilma has a mellower sounding piano. Mind you, the night is bright because it needs voicing as well. And the 1990 night, the more modern one. And then more, much more variety. In the difference. Mind you, it's still a, a very, very good piano, actually, as it's got a lot of the night characteristics. And certainly I would say it would be a better purchase than a, uh, an inexpensive Far Eastern piano. The action is it's going to be a lot more stable um, than, a, than a, a, say, a new Far Eastern piano that's not expensive. And does have a very full tone, so it's a good piano. And finally, the more modern knight has three pedals, so Celeste Rail here. Um, so you can, obviously, it's a soft playing. Uh, if you want a Celeste Rail, I'll just put it down so you can see what it does. So, so you can quiet the piano down for practicing. But um, we can fit that onto the other one too. So on the, this night that we're featuring, um, it can have practice uh, pedal fitted, or it's not a pedal, it's a lever that um, we goes down to the edge of the, I'll show you what I mean, sorry. So I don't have one in stock at the moment, but it'd be a lever that you pull here, and that activates the Celeste. We have one that's been fitted on this, this well mask, so you see on the side here, if you activate that, then that, that sorry, as you push that, down that activates the Celeste. So that can be fitted to the majority of upright pianos. So that's um, a look at this night that's just come into stock, 1970 K10. And one of the pianos we're really trying to source. They're just uh, extremely well made, very, very stable pianos. Uh, and also very long lasting, they don't seem to wear hugely like a lot of other pianos. Um, obviously it's a small piano, but for a small piano, it's a surprisingly strong bass. This one needs voicing a bit at the moment. Some notes are more harsh than others. But a rich, warm sound everywhere you go. contrast it with a, a younger night piano and just make a few comments uh, before we go to the taller piano by the way there's still some younger knights may uh, knight york particularly is is uh, like the other one we said has the the bar brace that they they talk about that uh, and generally the manufacturer standard isn't as high as this it's not as stable as well so these are the really immensely stable ones stay in tune for for so long really So this is the younger night, made in 1990, and very different really, very different tone. Like a lot of um, modern pianos, but still very well made, being a night. And has a pleasant sound. It's not got this sort of extra special quality that the original nights have. It's like a, in most other pianos of this sort of age, really. Perhaps I'm being a bit unfair to it. 
By the way, the names come off here and somebody stuck some letters on it. If you looked closely, you can see the shadow of the original name here. And that's quite common for this age of night, names to come off. But that doesn't mean to say they're badly made pianos. But they're still very stable and I think if you're a tuner, you probably agree with me that you'd rather your clients have one of these than a very cheaply made new piano. Um, so I hope that's been helpful, just to look at these two pianos and have a think about which pianos you might buy. Wellmar being the other sort of major make that we buy, but we also have other makes that we try and source, so less of them. Fatsa being one of them, for instance, and that's a, not, so, not quite such a high quality piano, but much less expensive. Thank you very much for listening. Sorry, I just realised as I listened to the video that this, this first piano that we're really featuring is was too harsh on the video, so the, I'd better do some voicing. So we do some voicing, and uh, these are here to, on upright, so we can just continually voice if you hear one that's a bit too bright. I think I've done most of it. And then uh, we can, if, if you go too far the other way, we can, um, take it back, make it slightly brighter again. So that, that never ends that process really. You can play the piano and just continue to voice it. On the grands, we have a check sheet that we obviously can't pull the action of a grand out, out and in all the time. So on uprights though, you can voice it like this. So. And now it's just about the right amount of mellowness. Of course, if you like a mellow piano, you can make it mellower. So you can just lightly voice this note here and just hold the hammer on. Uh, it's just lightly voicing on the tip. You don't want to go at all deep on the tip, but let's just voice it very slightly. And it's almost correct, so just very, very light, really. And uh, don't want to overdo it. So listen to it. About the same now. And that's slightly brighter. It ne never finishes really voicing. I think it's roughly right now. The singing area is the most important for voicing, but you do also need to voice the bass. The strings stick out a bit, it might sticks out a bit, it might just be the voicing of the hammer. But it was mainly the playing area around here that needed voicing. I mean the melody area. Well, we can carry on voicing, but I, I thought I'd just show you that because the piano did sound so harsh before and I didn't want to leave the video without doing something to it. Thank you very much for listening again.